learning English as a second language. What does that mean for your dog? Let's talk about that. Hi, welcome back to our next dog training tips, March Madness, a dog training tip video every day for the whole of March, I hope going well so far so thank you for coming back and thank you for supporting me on this journey of trying to think up new things new tips so today it's teaching English as a second language I can't remember who coined this to start with I think it might have been Ian Dunbar so one thing that people often forget about is that their dogs simply don't speak English or any human language on the planet. We tend to think that just talking at our dogs is a great way to teach them what we want them to do. But it's really kind of unfair. Dogs do not speak English. They don't know what we're talking about. They don't even communicate quite the same way that we do. So give an example of this is when someone's trying to teach their dog to stay, they often don't bother thinking about actually teaching the dog what the word means. They'll just put them, say, in a sit or something and then wag their hand in front of the dog's face and gruffly tell them to stay. And this is supposed to somehow make sense to the dog, which it absolutely doesn't. Dogs do not dogs don't behave like that you'll never see a wolf in the wild holding up a paw into the face of another dog to tell it to stay put so basically we've got to realize that the dog doesn't know what we mean there so when we've done this the dog has an option of several things he's obviously confused they tend to want to please us so he's going to try and figure out what it is he has to do so your dog has a choice of several options here when you've told him to do this he might actually just in his confused state stay put and fantastic you're able to praise him and tell him what a good boy he is and he might kind of learn how to stay like that that's just because he's associating what's happened next with what's happened so when you tell him to stay and he does stay something nice happens so he slowly starts to realize okay staying puts what you want that doesn't mean that he understood you that means he's really clever and he's figured it out but equally he might choose to do something different he might decide to come towards you or something and now how do you deal with that quite often people without even thinking they're doing so they punish their dog you assume the dog knew what you meant by stay so if they move away from where you put them you go back you sound a little bit disproving, you put them back in their position. Some people even get a bit more violent with, with the whole thing. They'll maybe smack their dog or force them into position. They'll wag their hand even closer into the dog's face and they'll say stay even louder. And what you find happens 90% of the time is the dog will actually creep forwards again because now your dog is actually quite confused, a little bit concerned or even scared and is a bit worried about why you're angry so they're wanting to creep towards you for reassurance and now you're getting pretty angry you've told him to stay twice and he's moved so you go back might give him a wee shake you might shout at him a bit more put him back in his position and tell him to stay and this is repeated until the dog stays put and usually they choose to stay put because they're so scared or confused that they don't know what else to do and they do what we call shut down and just stay in the same spot so he's not staying because you've told him to he's staying because he's scared that everything he does is wrong so he's just going to give up and stay put so that's pretty cruel really if you think about it from the dog's point of view so that it, it would be much better if you taught your dog exactly what you want and I do have a video for that I will hopefully remember and link somewhere so if we think about how you've been training things like this imagine you were in a strange country you couldn't speak a word of the language and the other person was trying to teach you without being able to speak a word of your language and they wanted to teach you the word chair and they took you into a room that had 20 different objects and one of them was a chair. Now, what we're doing to the dog is the equivalent of walking into that room, yelling at the person, chair, and then waiting for them to find it. And basically, if they go to anything that isn't the chair, yelling at them, taking them back to the start and telling them chair again. Now, eventually you would figure out 
what they were looking for or you would be so stressed you would give up and tell them that you didn't want to learn but it would be pretty stressful you'd be constantly like is this right am I going to get this right I'm getting shouted at it would be much better if they just took you and showed you the chair and explained that's what the word was and dogs are kind of similar they learn best from associating what's happening at the time with the action they're doing so um so if you're wanting a really great recall, rather than calling your dog and hoping they come, it's better to actually start pairing the word you're wanting to use for recall with the point when the dog's actually running full pelt back at you. And then they'll slowly learn that whatever that word is actually means running back full pelt. As humans, we muddle this up quite a lot with dogs as well. Uh, imagine if your dog's barking at the at the postman or something and you yell at him quiet now he doesn't know what the word means but he starts to associate every time he's barking you say the word quiet so quiet must mean bark so you see how actually we're we're teaching them very badly how to speak our language so think about that when you're saying a word to a dog how have you actually taught them what that word means quite often we haven't really Okay, so I hope that helped somewhat. Thank you so much for coming back again and sticking with me for this crazy March series. And I hope to see you tomorrow.